everybody. Welcome back. Jiu-Jitsu 2000 here today. I'm coming at you with another interesting video today. The topic of what I want to talk about today is tallow. Okay, you can see that I have a little bowl here and it's it's a solid form. Tallow is basically rendered beef fat. Now, it could be fat from a lot of different animals. It's that hard white fat. It could be from deer, elk, caribou, buffalo, uh, in our case it's from beef and what happens is we take this fat from these animals and we render it down removing the impurities out of the fat and the reason we remove the impurities out of the fat is because we want to stop the ability of this fat from going rancid so rendering it down to get it into a state like this now you can also do what I'm fixing to show you using lard now the big difference between tallow and lard is tallow comes from all of those animals that I mentioned earlier and lard comes from pork or pigs. Now another difference between tallow and lard is tallow at room temperature is generally harder than lard. Lard is softer and it, if it's hot outside the lard will be a lot softer and a lot looser where tallow it tends to hold its shape a little more so that's why tallow in my opinion is better than lard for making candles so stay with me and I hope you enjoy the video today we're gonna make some tallow candles okay so here we go you can see behind me I have a small pan back here uh, it's not hot yet but you can see that I have some tallow in here that I'm starting to warm up now it doesn't have to be hot or anything like that it just has to be warm enough to the point where it brings it from this solid state to a liquid state. Now this is the same tallow that I made in this batch. I'm just, you know, showing you this. But that stuff in the pan is the same stuff that I'm using. So I want to share with you a few things that you're going to need to make these candles. First thing I would recommend is some sort of ladle because we're going to be dipping this liquid and pouring it into a container to make our candles. Now when I speak of containers you, you there's a, a wide variety of types of containers that you can use to put your candles in. You can put something like that you can put them in something like this you know small glass jars it doesn't really matter per se what kind of container you're using as long as you have a good clean container but in our case today we're going to be using these small mason jars. That's the type of container that we're going to use today. So with that being said let's talk about some other things that we might need. You might be wondering why I have a soda can in my hand. The purpose of the soda can is for this tab. If I turn this tab 180 degrees and put it over the opening of the can and I push upward with my thumb you can see that I can pop that tab off. This tab is what we actually need, not the whole can. This tab is going to be used to hold our wick into the bottom of this jar. If you don't have a soda can at your disposal, you can also use duct tape to do that same job. Obviously we're going to need some kind of poking stick. That doesn't have to be wood. It could be metal or anything like that because we, we might need to poke down in there to to relocate the wick a little bit if it starts getting south on us. Because it's very important to make sure that the wick is centered, very centered into this container. And to help with that process, I have a small piece of bailing wire that I use. And what this does is when I put the wick down into the container, I set this on the top of the container and it helps hold the wick in place while the candle dries. I have a small pair of scissors, just some cheap kitchen sears that I like to use. And that's basically everything we need except for, last but not least, the wick. Okay, so let me go ahead and talk to you about the wicks you can use a lot of different materials for wicks okay this happens to be cotton yarn okay this is good stuff but look it falls down it doesn't stay standing up on end it falls down so I would not use 
cotton yarn, even though it works great as a wick, it, it doesn't hold itself up. And I'll explain why that's important here in a minute. So there's one option that you can use. This is another option. This is just cotton string. Okay, this is like craft string. But again, look, it falls down. Both of these are excellent for wicks, but they don't stay upright. And so we're going to not use this either. Here's another option. These are cotton off of a cotton mop head. Okay, let me just put these two away and I'll just show you the one. There are three ply, actually they have four there. They work good for wicks and again look what happens. They don't really stand up too well. These would be a better option I'm saying if you were to strip it down to one piece, okay, let three of them go and use one for your wick. This would be a little bit better than the yarn and the string, but again, we're still dealing with that portion of it falling down. Now, if we used all four strands, look, it's still too weak. So these cotton things that come off of our mops, I would not recommend those either, even though they work good for wicks. So, last but not least, is my favorite. Okay, now this is some cotton string. Now look at what happens here. I don't have to do anything and this cotton string stays upright pretty well. This is what I would highly recommend to use for any kind of candles that you make. This upright property that it has, it's stiff enough and it's thin enough. It's not like some big old thick thing. It's thin and it makes an excellent wick especially for tallow candles or regular candles for that matter. All these other wicks that you see back here, they work really good for oil type candles. But since we're making a hard fat kind of candle, I highly recommend this. Now, why do I need my wick to stand up on end? Well, that's simple. I've had a lot of candles in the past and these wicks back here, they work perfect. But what happens is once the, the candle starts burning, right, and it's starting to turn it into that liquid at the top because of the heat due to the flame, the, there's nothing to hold the wick up so the wick will fall over and it'll smother itself underneath the liquid portion of the candle. And when that happens, it puts the flame out. So that's why I recommend these. okay let's get started let's cut our wick okay first thing I want to do is I want to lay the wick down towards the bottom of the candle all the way down to the surface then I'm gonna cut an extra inch or two that's the length of wick that I'd recommend you want it to go down and stick out a little bit see sticks out about an inch and a half from here I'm gonna take this small tab and my pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut this corner off. I'm also gonna cut this corner off. Okay, so what's left behind is this small tab. Okay, again, I cut this portion off. See that? I hope you can see that. So this is the part that I need right here. What I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna take my wicking material and I'm going to push the whole thing through this little hole. This is kind of like threading a needle. So bear with yourself and be patient here. You need the whole thing to go through. Kind of a cumbersome process. Don't get frustrated. Just be patient. Work this thing through. kind of spinning it. I need this to go through. Okay, we're almost there. There we go. Now you can see that I'm pretty much through it. See that? 
I'm pretty much through it. Now what I want to do is I want to fix this end and I want to lay this thing down to where I have just about just a tiny bit. I want to rough this end up. Okay, I want to collapse all these fibers. From here, I'm going to dip this into the liquid tallow back here. Okay, now I'm going to set it straight down into my container. I hope you can see that. I'm going to rest it right down in the middle in the bottom. And I'm going to kind of take my pointer here, my little stick, and I'm just going to push it down. So what I want to do is I want to set the center of the bottom of the candle. In the meantime, I'm going to take a small bit of tallow, just a little bit. Not a lot. We're not actually making the whole candle yet. We're just seating the wick down there. I'm going to pour this down in. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to let it solidify. Okay, we're, we're, the, the, the thing that we're trying to establish right now is centering our wick in the bottom of our jar. So I'm going to go put this in the refrigerator or the freezer and let this tallow solidify. I'll be back when this is finished. Okay everybody, I'm back. This has sat in the freezer for a pretty decent amount of time. And the whole time that this had been sitting in the freezer, I have turned the heat off to this tallow. The reason I turn the heat off is for two, two reasons. One, I don't want to pour hot tallow into a cold glass and risk the potential for this glass to break. And two, I don't want hot tallow on top of cold tallow because I'm afraid that if I pour hot on top of cold, it'll cool or heat up all this tallow and I'll lose the position of my wick. Right now I have my wick fairly well centered and I want to keep it that way. So I'm going to take basically... I wouldn't say room temperature, but I'd say slightly warmed up tallow. And I'm just going to pour it right on top of the wick, right on top of everything. It was important that I established the wick, you know, by solidifying it prior to pouring the whole candle because it's it's crucial that I get that wick centered. If I don't have that wick centered and I pour tallow in here, there's a chance that a few things could happen. One could be that I could crack my glass when the candle burns if the flame is too close to the side of the glass. So to prevent that, again, I made that bottom solid. I'm going to just take this because it's cool to the touch. It's been sitting there. I'm just going to pour a little bit in there. From here, set this stuff aside and again I'm going to make sure that my wick is centered about as close to center as possible and I'm going to sit here and let this chill. I'll probably actually go put it in the refrigerator or the freezer and I'll be back with you when that's finished. Let's give you a quick view before I do that. So this is what we're dealing with. You can see that my wick is close to the center you can see that the tallow is already starting to solidify. If I zoom in, you can see that the cold is turning that liquid solid. So we'll be back in a few. Show you what I got. Okay, I'm back. This thing has had quite a bit of time to sit in the freezer. I left it in the freezer for, oh gosh, maybe 30 minutes or something. Then I took it out of the freezer and I put it in the fridge. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this holder and what I want to do now at this point is I want to take my scissors and I want to cut this wick so that it's only oh gosh maybe an eighth of an inch long. Don't want it too long. So from here I can light this candle now. But before I do that I'm going to clean this tallow off the glass. Find me a little rag here. 
I'm just going to kind of clean the jar up. Just get the excess tallow off. So that this will be clean and nice and easy to manage. Okay, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just cleaning it up a little bit. Now, I can take my lighter and light this candle. The first time you light these, they're a little bit difficult to light because you haven't established the draw of the fuel through the wick yet. So that first light is always a little bit more difficult. One thing that you can do to prevent that from being so bad is to soak your wick in the tallow when it's on the heat back there. But in our case, obviously we don't need to do that. So this is some of the tallow that I was showing you earlier. I'm going to go ahead and put this back and I'm going to let that burn for a little bit. And I'll probably reduce the lights a little bit. I'll let you see what that candle looks like. Puts out a nice little flame. Makes a nice little candle. Okay, I've had this candle burning, oh gosh, about half of an hour. And you can see that it kind of turns into a liquid around the top. That is why we wanted the wick that would stand up on itself. Because I know that this turns liquid, just like any other candle. Well, there you have it, everybody. I want to say thank you for watching my video today on making tallow candles. I hope that you found some good, useful information out of the video. As always, please feel free to comment, like, share this video, thumbs up, invite new people over to my channel. I really appreciate the support that you guys give me. And last but not least, thank you for watching. Have a beautiful day, everybody. We'll see you next time. And enjoy those candles. Bye-bye. <laughs>